you will hear a woman booking a bicycle tour over the phone. First, you have some time to look at questions one to four. You will see that there is an example that has been done for you. On this occasion only, the conversation relating to this will be played first. Global bicycle tours. May I help you? Yes, thank you. I'd like to sign up for a bicycle tour. The man answers the phone. Global bicycle tours. So the word global has been written at the top of the form. Now we shall begin. You should answer the questions as you listen, because you will not hear the recording a second time. Listen carefully and answer questions one to four. Global bicycle tours. May I help you? Yes, thank you. I'd like to sign up for a bicycle tour. Which tour were you interested in? We have the River Valley tour coming up in June and the Mountain tour in July. The River Valley tour is in June. I thought it was in May. It actually takes place the first week of June. Oh, I see. Well, I can still do that. The River Valley tour is the one I want. Splendid. Just let me take your information. May I have your name, please? Carla Schmidt. That's Carla with a K, not a C. K A R L A. Thank you, Miss Schmidt. Address? Do you need a street address, or can I give you my post office box? A post office box is fine. It's P.O. Box two five seven, Manchester. Thank you. Okay. Next, will you be bringing your own bicycle, or do you want to rent one from us? I'll bring my own. Excellent. Now we provide all the meals, so we need to know if you have any dietary restrictions. I don't think so. What do you mean? I mean, if there's any food you can't eat. Some people have food allergies, or are vegetarian, or have to avoid dairy products. Things like that. Oh, I see. Well, yes, I'm a vegetarian. I never eat meat. Now listen and answer questions five to ten. All right, I'll make a note of that. Now the total cost of the tour is seven hundred and fifty dollars. That much? The price includes everything: food, hotel, transportation, everything. Everything? Yes, everything. The only other thing is you'll want to tip the tour guide. We usually recommend five percent of the total tour cost. A five percent tip. I guess that's reasonable. In order to reserve your space on the tour, I'll need a thirty percent deposit. Do you need that right away? We generally ask for the deposit at least four weeks before the tour begins. The River Valley tour begins, let me see, six weeks from now. So you'll need to pay the deposit in two weeks. I think I can do that. I wonder if you could tell me something. How will our luggage be transported? Do we carry it on our bicycles? No, you leave that to us. We have a van that carries your luggage from hotel to hotel each day, so you don't have to worry about it. Great! I have a luggage rack for my bike, but I guess I won't have to bring that. No, you won't. But there are a few items we recommend that you bring. We can't control the weather, so you should bring a raincoat or rain gear. Yes, that's a good idea. 
And I should have my own spare tyre too, shouldn't I? Actually, you don't need that, as our guide always carries some. And of course, you won't need maps either, since our guide has the route all planned. What about a water bottle? I'll need that, won't I? Yes, you should definitely have a water bottle. A camera would be a good idea too, since that tour goes through some very scenic areas. I have a guidebook of that area. I wonder if I should bring it along. We don't recommend guidebooks. It would just be extra weight, and the tour guide knows a great deal about the area. Yes, I see. Is there anything else I need to know? I think we've covered the important points. I'll send you a tour brochure, and you can call again if you have any questions. Thank you very much. That is the end of section one. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Section 2. You will hear a radio interview about a lakeside resort. First, you have some time to look at questions 11 to 15. As you listen to the first part of the talk, answer questions 11 to 15. Good afternoon, and welcome to today's show. The warm months are with us, and many of you are getting ready to plan vacation trips. To help you with that, we have a special guest today, Robert Sampson, director of the Golden Lake Resort. Robert. I understand Golden Lake is a popular place for families to spend their vacations. Yes, families enjoy spending time at Golden Lake. Many come back year after year. We have a spectacular location and fun activities for both children and adults. Could you describe for us some of the activities available at Golden Lake? We have a lot of water activities, of course, since we're right on the lake. We have a pleasant sandy beach for swimming. We also have canoes and sailboats available, and many of our guests enjoy boating on the lake. I imagine water skiing would be popular among your guests. Actually, we don't permit water skiing in the resort area. It can be dangerous for swimmers and for the canoeists, too. We do have a great location for fishing, though, and you'll often see guests fishing from our dock or from the canoes. That sounds very relaxing. What about activities on land? Do you have facilities for tennis? We had tennis in the past, but the courts fell out of repair, and since we found that most of our guests weren't interested in the game, we closed the courts down. So that's no longer an option. And naturally, because of our location in the woods, we don't have an adequate area for a golf course. But I'd like to let your listeners know that we'll be adding a new activity this year. We've made an arrangement with the local stable. So now we're going to have horseback riding available for our guests. We've created several riding trails around the lake. That sounds lovely. Now, what about rainy days? What can your guests do when the weather's bad? We have a games room and a crafts room. When the weather's rainy, some of our very talented staff members offer arts and crafts classes for all ages. What fun! Do you offer any other classes or activities?
Now listen and answer questions 16 to 20. We have a weekly schedule of evening activities which anyone can attend if they choose. Every Sunday we show a film, always something that's suitable for the whole family. Monday's my favourite night because that's dessert night. Our cook prepares a variety of desserts and we get to taste them all. Mmm, I'd like to be there for that. Yes, it's great. We get more serious toward the middle of the week. Our discussion night is on Tuesday. Discussion night? Yes, we discuss different current events, depending on what's happening that week in the news. Then on Wednesdays, we have lectures. We invite different experts to talk about local history or nature topics. This is actually one of our most popular evening activities. We found that our guests are really interested in learning about the local area. It sounds quite interesting. Yes, we've had some excellent speakers. Thursday nights are totally different, because that's when we play games. That's especially fun for the children. The children love Fridays, too, because that's talent show night. Everyone gets in on that. Staff, guests, everyone. It looks like you have a lot of fun at Golden Lake Resort. We do. And we end every week with big fun, with a dance on Saturday night. Now I understand a little more why Golden Lake is such a popular place for family vacations. With such a variety of activities, there's something for every member of the family there. There is, and I hope your listeners will consider spending their next vacation with us. That is the end of Section 2. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Section 3. You will hear a conversation between two students planning a research project. First, you have some time to look at questions 21 to 23. As you listen to the first part of the conversation, answer questions 21 to 23. We'd better start planning our research project because we don't have much time left before it's due. I know, only three more weeks. Is that all? I thought we had more time than that. Well, let's get to work then. OK, so we agreed we're going to interview shoppers about their spending habits. Did we decide to conduct our interviews at the department store? We haven't decided anything definitely yet, but I think the shopping mall would be a better place. We'd get more of a variety of shoppers there. Yes, that's a good point. So let's do that. How many interviews did the professor say we had to complete? She said at least 30. That sounds like a lot, doesn't it? Yes, but if we divide it up between the two of us, that's just 15 each. That's not so bad. Now listen and answer questions 24 to 30. OK, so I guess we'd better start designing our questionnaire. Well, we have to do some reading first, don't we? Didn't we say we were going to compare our results to the results of a government study? Right, the government study about how the economic crisis has changed people's spending habits. We want to see if we get similar results. 
Yes, so we'd better read that first and then design our questionnaire. Then I guess we'll be ready to go out and interview shoppers. No, don't you remember? The professor said she had to approve our questionnaire first before we actually conducted the interviews. Oh, right. So we'll get her approval and then conduct the interviews. I think a Saturday would be the best day for the interviews because everyone's out shopping then. Right. We'll do it on a Saturday then. And let's also plan to get together the next day to analyse the results. It's best to do that while everything's fresh in our minds, don't you think? Sure. That sounds like a good idea. OK, so then we're going to have to present our results to the class. Do you have any ideas for that? It's an important part of our grade, so I think we should plan it well. Well, I think the obvious thing is to prepare some charts showing our results and how they compare with the government study. That will help make the information a lot clearer to the class. Right. OK, so we'll draw up some charts of the results. And then that's it. All that will be left to do is give the class presentation. Do you think we can be ready on time? I sure hope so. Let's get started now. That is the end of Section 3. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Section 4. Section 4. You will hear a lecture about the black bear. First, you have some time to look at questions 31 to 35. Now listen carefully and answer questions 31 to 35. The black bear, or Ursus americanus, has a wide range inhabiting forested areas of North America, including Canada, the United States, and parts of northern Mexico. Black bears are omnivores, getting their nutrition from a wide variety of plants and animals. The particular foods any one bear eats depends on what's available in the area where that bear lives, as well as on the season of the year. Generally speaking, plant foods make up 90% of the bear's diet. The rest of its meals consist of animal foods, such as insects and fish. Bears have a relatively long gestation period. Mating takes place in the spring or early summer, but bear cubs aren't born until the following winter. Usually, two cubs are born at a time, although some litters may have as many as five cubs. Bear cubs are dependent on their mother and may stay with her for close to two years. Wild black bears can live as long as 25 years. They've lived for as long as 30 years or more in captivity. Now listen carefully and answer questions 36 to 40. Much of the black bear's range coincides with the range of its close cousin, the grizzly bear. Although these bears are somewhat similar in appearance and habits, it isn't difficult to tell the difference between them. Colour isn't necessarily a distinguishing characteristic, as both species of bears occur in a range of colours from almost blonde to dark brown or black. Many black bears, however, have a patch of fur on their chests that's lighter in colour than the rest of their fur. Grizzly bears don't have this patch. Size isn't always a distinguishing feature either, 
although grizzly bears are usually heavier with an average weight of 225 kilos. Black bears average 140 kilos in weight. Grizzly bears spend time digging in the ground for roots and tubers that make up part of their diet. The large muscles they need for this give them a distinct shoulder hump. This hump is absent in black bears, which don't do the same kind of digging. The shape of the face and ears is also different in each species of bear. Grizzly bears have a depression between the eyes and nose and short round ears. Black bears, on the other hand, have a straighter profile and longer, more pointed ears. Grizzly bears are known for their fearsome, long, sharp claws. Black bears have shorter claws, which are better suited for climbing trees. That is the end of section four. You now have half a minute to check your answers.